Welcome back to the Crypto Gorilla YouTube channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the different ways you can make money in Web3. I think a lot of people view NFTs as simply flipping whitelists, degen mints, or buying blue chips. But the truth is, there's a bunch of different ways you can make money in Web3 and capitalize on being early in this space, depending on your skill sets. I also think as more and more Web2 brands jump into this space, they're gonna be looking for specific expertise. And the more time you spend studying the space, making connections, and and understanding the culture of NFTs, the more value you're gonna be able to provide to them. So these are all the ways that I've thought of. If I missed any, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you like this kind of content, hit that like button. It really helps my channel grow and it helps get through the algorithm. And of course, if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, would you kindly consider hitting that subscribe button? So first things first, let's just get them out of the way. Of course, you can make money in Web3 by flipping NFTs. First, you can grind for whitelist either with one account with a bunch of accounts, you can pay a virtual assistant to grind for you. And then if it's flippable, you flip that NFT. You could also try to sell your whitelisted Discord account, but that is very risky. Next, you could do the DGen mints. Most people just hang out on Mobi or whatever tool they use, see which mints are getting a lot of attention, and then they take a chance with it. These are often free or a very cheap price. We just had the free cycle, which was sparked by Goblin Town. Then we had a few other winners like Wagdai, as well as I'll Poop It. And even though the price to enter after all of these is very cheap. If you're minting 10, 20 different projects a day in bulk, that does add up. And I personally didn't get into any of the recent DGen plays. That's just not where I excel in the NFT space. So I just focus on what I'm good at. The other way, of course, is looking for blue chips, buying NFTs you believe are undervalued or will soon be part of the narrative. Something like when the other deeds were coming out, if you bought a mutant ape just a few weeks earlier, you could have gotten in at 20 Ethereum and they pumped to 40 Ethereum. So there are ways to identify projects that are gonna pump. The important thing is that you sell into the volume because more often than not, they end up having a pump and then the price comes back down. It's kind of like a buy the rumor, sell the news situation. So the best strategy for this is just to list it the second you buy it at a price that you feel it can go to and that you're comfortable letting it go for. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's focus on the different ways that you can make money in the space. Now, some of these are gonna require unique skills, but we're gonna go through each one of them one by one. So the first way you can make money is if you're an artist. Now you can either be an artist for a project by having a profile on popular sites like DeviantArt, ArtStation, networking in the NFT space and showing off your portfolio, or you can even have a Fiverr account or a Upwork account. Now the other way is by creating one of one art pieces and putting them on websites like Foundation, on Super Rare, but you can't just expect to upload a piece and for it to sell for a million dollars or even one dollar. You're gonna have to play the whole social media game. You're gonna have to grow your presence on Instagram, on Twitter, build up an audience that wants to support you, and then you'll hopefully be able to sell them your art if it's unique, if they're able to recognize that it's your pieces and if they simply vibe with it. Next, maybe you're not so good on the creative side, but you're good on the technical side. You could potentially become a Solidity developer. Now, Solidity is the programming language used on Ethereum. If you wanna do Solana, you're gonna to need to learn Rust. However, I wouldn't suggest diving into any of these if you don't have the base programming knowledge. What you should do is learn the basics on a website like Code Academy, learn HTML, especially learn JavaScript. And then once you're good enough at that, you could jump into to Solidity. And there's a bunch of tools you could use to learn Solidity, one of them being Crypto Zombies. The next way is by starting your own unique company in Web3, whether you're doing a marketplace, whether you're doing some sort of sniping tool, alpha tool, whatever it is, a mint calendar maybe, a website. However, once again, this is gonna require a lot of skills and of course, a unique idea. Now this is more of the startup mentality. And in Web3, the most common startup mentality, of course, is starting your own project. Now I would not recommend doing this unless you fully understand what you're getting into. And unless you've spent enough time in the space, actually buying and selling NFTs, hanging out in different discords and learning the culture of the space. I think too many people see how easy it is to sell out some degen mint or they have success flipping NFTs. And then they think, Hey, I can do that. Why don't 
a few of us get together, launch our own project, but they're not thinking about the long term of the project. They're just thinking about making a couple hundred thousand dollars each, maybe making a million dollars, but they don't understand that this is a lifelong commitment. If you look at how angry people were at the Azuki founder when he rugged those previous projects, people just don't accept failure in this industry. If you fail in web two, nobody's mad at you. People are just like, oh, you gave it a shot, move on. Maybe you start another company in web three. It is almost unacceptable. So you have to really understand you are taking people's money as basically your startup cash. And it's not just like one or two, you're taking money from 5,000 people who now have immediate expectations that the floor price is going to pump. And this is very hard to do. Now, on top of all those different pressures, you're also going to have to be able to manage a team, figure out where you want to take the project and take your product, deal with the whole legal side of everything. You're going to have to deal with taxes. You're going to have to do all your accounting. You're going to have to manage all the money and pay your staff. There's just so much more work than just creating art and making a million dollars. Now, what I do suggest most people who are considering starting a project do is go work for a project as a moderator. Now, I understand you want to be the CEO and I'm telling you to go and be a waiter. However, I do believe there is a lot of value in doing this. One, you're going to understand how a community works, how the discord works. Two, you're going to get to see behind the scenes of a project. You're hopefully going to get to attend all the meetings. You're going to get to see all the things they do right, as well as the things they do wrong. You're going to build up your name in the space as you bond with the community. And you're also going to make a ton of connections. A lot of projects do end up just giving you free NFTs or maybe a couple extra whitelist spots. But the value here is really the experience and the connections, not so much the money. And at the end of the day, if anything goes wrong with the project, it's not your project. It's not your responsibility. You could just walk away with all that knowledge, all those connections, and you're scot-free. Nobody is mad at you. Now, once you have that experience, the next thing you could do is join a project with a different role. Maybe you become their community manager. Maybe you help them with their social media marketing. But this is kind of like getting a promotion from being a moderator. Maybe you even become a head moderator. So now you have a more solidified job. You can make more money. Maybe you're even going to get a percentage of the mint. But you still don't have that responsibility of managing a ton of staff, paying out salaries, and all that. The next way you can make money in Web3 is by running your very own alpha group. Now, this is something I personally do. There are two ways of doing it. The way I do it is I have a monthly fee that people pay. And the other way is by launching an NFT where you get all the money in one shot and then you just survive off of the royalties. Now, there are many pros and cons to both of these. I prefer the monthly subscription because NFTs kind of come off as this lifelong membership. And the day I want to quit, which I will want to quit one day, I don't want to leave somebody who just bought an NFT for five Ethereum on secondary holding the bag. Now I do understand I can do a yearly NFT where it just expires at the end of the year. And if, and if I want to continue, I give everybody who had it whitelist for the next edition. However, there are benefits to the monthly subscription. One of them being, you don't have to pay this huge amount up front. So if you don't find you're getting the value, you could simply cancel. And that gives me the ability to pick who gets into the group. And I could pick a member who I feel is going to add a ton of value instead of somebody simply buying in on secondary. Now, of course, the benefit to launching an NFT is I get all that money up front. But for the moment, I'm fine with the monthly subscription and considering NFTs are down pretty bad, I wouldn't feel comfortable asking for a large sum of money in these times. Now I understand I have my YouTube channel, I have my Twitter page, so it's easier for me to get members in my group because I do end up getting a lot of whitelist spots. So if you want to do this, you are going to have to build up your name. There was a period of time, roughly a month ago, where I was getting approached by four to five different alpha projects per week, telling me they're launching an alpha group. It's going to be the best group. They have X people involved and they're going to get so many whitelist spots. I know how difficult it is to get whitelist spots and it is very competitive. There are a ton of projects. There are a ton of influencers and there's only so many spots to go around. So what I suggest you do, especially if you don't have a name in the space is start a group for free, start providing value, show them that you do have good alpha, that you're able to find good projects. And then as your group grows, you're going to have numbers. You could start approaching projects and saying, Hey, I have these 500 people who love NFTs. Can I get a couple spots to give away to them? Slowly grow your Twitter page, grow your presence. You don't have to have a YouTube channel. If you look at somebody like Tokoa, he doesn't have a YouTube channel. He started off by doing alpha calls for free. Then at one point he got an alpha channel in servers like NanoPass, and eventually he launched his own project. But the goal here is start off for free, which is exactly what I did. Show people that you could provide value and then monetize them once you have a loyal community of supporters. Too many 
many people want the money first without providing value. And all that leads to is potentially disappointing people. What you should do is under promise and over deliver and starting off free is the perfect way to do that. The next way you can make money is by connecting people. The amount of times somebody that I've been speaking with connects me to a project that leads to a whitelist collab is way higher than you think. And at minimum, that person gets themselves a free whitelist. Now, once you build up a reputation, once you have connections with a ton of different influencers, what you could do is monetize that. You could work with projects and you could say, hey, I have this roster of 20 influencers and 30 projects that I could introduce you to. And then you could charge them a fee, I don't know, five ETH or maybe even a percentage of their mint, depending how many collaborations they get. Now, in all situations, I suggest you charge a fee up front. That way, if anything doesn't work out, if they don't mint out, if they don't even do the project, you at least got paid for your work. I'm not saying have them pay the entire fee, but if you're gonna charge five ETH, maybe have them pay one ETH up front. The next way you can make money is by advising projects. Now to do this, you are gonna have to build some sort of name in the space or have a specific set of skills or very good connections. However, it is a very profitable way to make money. And again, you don't have that commitment of having to oversee the project for years. You could simply come in, maybe help them with their marketing strategy, help them with Discord security, help them with collaborations, introduce them to Web2 brands, maybe for a sponsorship. But there are so many things that projects need help with, especially these Web2 brands, because they are very lost when it comes to NFTs and they make all the basic mistakes that we're all used to seeing. So if you are able to provide them with that knowledge, with your expertise, you are gonna make some good money. Now, this is something I've personally recently gotten into. And once again, I understand I have my platform, I have my Twitter account, my YouTube, so it's easier for me to get some of these gigs. I do get a bunch of offers and I have refused 99.9% .9 of them. However, now there are some projects that I've started to work with just based on the qualifications of the team. And I can tell you it is very fun. It's very fulfilling. If you love this space, you're going to love advising projects. Hopefully, hopefully they listen to you and they're not just, you know, hearing you talk and not doing anything you say. That could be very frustrating. But if you find a team that you vibe with, it is going to be a very fun experience. And just like the previous point, you're going to want to charge a fee up front. Let's say you're charging 5% of their mint to advise them. You're going to want to ask for 10 to 15% of that up front. So let's say you're making something like 30 Ethereum off of their mint. You're going to want to ask for three to five Ethereum up front. Now there are different levels of advising. Like I said, maybe you just help them with marketing. And on the bigger level, if you have some sort of launch pad, you can help them with their smart contract. You can help them with their art. You can help them with whatever they need. And for that, you're going to need employees. So you're going to want to go out and hire a developer. You're going to want to look for artists and just have them on your roster. Now, again, this isn't something you should launch right away unless you have the experience experience in the space, as well as all of these contacts. I'm just telling you, it is a viable business strategy. Now, if you aren't able to do this on your own, there are a lot of these Web3 agencies popping up every single day. I've never used it, but there are sites like Web3 Career where you can find jobs in the Web3 space. So that is another avenue that you can pursue. Now, a great example of somebody who has successfully worked his way through a lot of these different ways of making money. He's a founder. He's been a moderator. He's helped with collaborations. He's helped with community. He does the connection side because he is great at networking and he currently does advising is going to be Gronk Wizard. If, if you sort of, as you said, provide value first and, you know, actually go out of your way to help someone, um, it just works in your favor no matter what. I think a lot of people expect a lot of things in this space. And I could tell you this person is a hustler. He's doing all this at the age of 20 while still being in university. So I have nothing but respect for Gronk. And I strongly suggest you go watch this interview and try to follow in his footsteps because in my opinion, this is the Web3 dream. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? Smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching the Crypto Gorilla. Peace.